So, a big welcome to New Horizons and uh, welcome back to Rob B, who tonight will be developing some of the fascinating issues that he referred to in his last presentation. Rob will be addressing the topic of the Dignity Alliance, a potentially revolutionary movement that aims to empower us all in the face of increasing control from the so-called elite. And we'll be focusing to some extent on how they are manipulating the truth about fracking. The Dignity Alliance aspires to represent the voice of the majority who have come to realise that politics and the world of international commerce no longer listens to us nor serves us. We have been reduced to being nothing more than useful assets by corporations who are not only above common justice but appear to be controlling the justice system and its mechanisms for their own ends. At the foundation of the Alliance is the opening sentence of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which asserts that the recognition of the inherent dignity and of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is the foundation of freedom, justice and peace in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Rob B. Okay, can you hear me okay? Wow, right, uh, thanks so much for inviting us along again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I know it's, uh, you, some of you come a good distance to be here tonight, so uh, thank you. Uh, I know some of you have come a good distance to be here tonight. I'll try and slow down my accent, my strong Wigan accent. Uh, right, uh, what we'll do is, so you don't think it's just one big fat ugly Scottish bloke talking nonsense, right? What I've decided to do, what we've decided to do is, uh, is two of the other uh, uh, founders, of the, the team of founders we have of this Dignity Alliance, and I'll, 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 I'll give them time in the stage so they can present what they want from the Dignity Alliance. You'll see that it's not just me and my ideas. I don't own this. It's owned by all of us. And you know, we, we, we welcome other people's input as well. Uh, to what you want this to do and where we, where we take it. So, uh, if, who, who wants to go first? So, just uh, this is uh, what you need. Hello. I'm not used to doing this sort of thing, so I have got some notes, but it won't take very long. Fracking, because I know it does affect us all. Where are these problems coming from? I know that, as I said, fracking is a big problem, but there's an awful lot more problems than just that. And for me personally, what I've identified is that a lot of our problems are coming from our so-called local authorities. I'm not spending too much time on this, but we have our councils and courts, uh, police, bailiffs, uh, laws, everything that they use against us. It shouldn't be used against us, but it is. And I'm watching as the local authority introduces more and more outrageous ideas. Uh, I suppose they're trying to convince us these are for our own good. Uh, a couple of examples of what they've been doing near me is I'll, I read the local paper, I see what's going on in the courts, and I see that uh, one guy got taken to court for uh, leaving his bin out too long. Someone else left a black bag inside a bin, they went to court. Some people have taken the kids on holiday, take them to court, fine them. Uh, and the most outrageous one I've just seen is an 87 year old woman who fed a pigeon. So for this outrageous act, they tried to take it to court. So what's behind what they're doing basically is they want our money. They always want our money. 
and now we know they're moving into fracking, they're authorising the fracking. They can uh, poison our water, but it's okay, because they'll make a lot of money out of it. So all those, what I talked about, the council, the court, the police, the bailiff, the government, these, we call them, we use these names, and it seems to legitimise them, and what they're doing. Well, I don't think what they're doing is legitimate. They seem to be one big gang, and all these are different branches, and different arms of the same gang. But they're very organised, so we have no chance, really, of getting what we want, which is very reasonable. We're not against anything. We're not saying we don't want to pay you any money. We just want to know where our money's going and it would be a sensible amount. We all pay our council tax. It costs us thousands. Where's it all going? I think it's reasonable to ask. But they're all well set up and we never get anywhere. And they don't listen to us. But we can learn something from these people because they're so organised, we need to do the same thing. Because at the moment, we're all just sending our letters in, we turn up to court, we tell them what the problem is, it's all there in black and white, and one guy says, no, no, I don't believe you, I'm not going with you, I'm going with the council, I'm going with whoever. So we need to get organised as well. And what we come up with is the Dignity Alliance. And it'll work by bringing all of us and all our individual voices together, which is what we've been lacking. We've got knowledge. We know that we're right in most cases and they're wrong. But we're up against an organised team, so we need to be an organised team. We need to have branches of people. Uh, this could be a branch, everyone who comes here. And they'll be structured, we'll be organised, we'll have professional people as well as all those keen amateurs as well. And we'll all come together and hopefully these vampires, we can shine some sunlight on these people. We're not, we're not against them all, there's some good ones, but the ones who are the vampires are the ones we need to hold to account. So, the Dignity Alliance, this needs to spread all over this country. We need everyone signed up. We need everyone telling everyone what we're going to do. Now, the mechanics of how this is going to work, Rob is better place to tell you about the mechanics of how it's going to work. But I hope that people agree there is, I think we all agree in this room anyway, that there is a need for this. We've got nothing. It was only today that we've, uh, Rob pointed us towards a video from a guy in America. They've been doing something like this for a while, influencing for the local community for their benefit. That's what we need. Hopefully, Rob, that's all I need for Seth. Hopefully, if you can come up here and tell people a bit more of how it works and tell them exactly how we plan on holding these people to account. So. Um, it's not a bit loud. I'm coming at this from a, 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 a slightly different angle. I read a little bit of history, not a great deal, not what you would sort of read in school history books. Um, but if I can take you, well, probably can't take you back, but you may have heard <laughs> of um, a guy called Winston Churchill and another guy, uh, David Lord George, another David. And the Prime Minister, who was, I think it was called Asquith at the time, 1905 this was, and they insisted that, or uh, the, the Liberal Party at the time insisted that they were going to start pensions for people. Now, these pensions weren't for everybody, they were only for a certain few, but everybody who paid tax was going to contribute towards it. And it was only a halfpenny, I don't know if you remember an old halfpenny. It was only a halfpenny out of a man's wage. But this was going to be towards um, like a national insurance scheme. Now they couldn't get this through the House of Lords. The House of Lords said, no, people can't afford this, a halfpenny. Or that might not seem a lot of money to us now, which is perhaps about a quarter of 1p. They said that the people can't afford it. 
So they said no, and rejected it. Now the reason they rejected it was because the Lord's was one of the checks and balances against the commons dictatorship. One of the commons could write laws, but they used to have checks and balances, and one of them was the Lord's, and the other one was the monarch. Now the Lord's turned around and said, no, we're not having this. We can't force our people to hand over a halfpenny every week. So you'll have to take it back and think about it again, or rewrite it again. Now the man Asquith, who was Prime Minister at the time, he then went to the Lords, or the leader of the Lords, and said, you don't pass this bill, I will create 500 new Lords, and we'll vote you out of existence. So the Lords backed down, and they passed it. So then it went to the monarch, and the monarch, he said, mm, no, sorry, people can't afford this, it's an awful lot of money, they can't afford it. So then they had to wait and wait and wait, and eventually the monarch died, and they got a new monarch. A bit green behind the ears, perhaps not as wise as his, I think it was his brother actually, the old king, or the dead king. So they said to this new king that the old king was going to sign this into law, and if you do that, everything's fine. People will be getting a pension. Not everybody will get a pension, only a certain few will be getting a pension. And we can perhaps guess who these people were who would be getting a pension. Perhaps parliamentarians. So anyway, he signed and it all went through fine. So what had happened, in effect, was that the Commons had overridden two checks and balances. And they've been doing it ever since, as far as finance is concerned. They can do virtually whatever they want. No matter who the government is, whether it's Labour, Liberal, Coalition, it's irrelevant. They can do whatever they want now, as far as money's concerned. Now, in 1999, the good man, Mr Tony Butcher Blur, he uh, signed into law the House of Lords Act which abolished all the hereditary hers, is that the right word? Hers, hers. I'm from Bolton, so I can't speak properly. Um, so there are no more hereditary peers left in the Lords. They're all placemen, they're all yes-men, they're all people who, people like Blur and Cameron, Brown, they're all people that have been put there by these people. People like John Prescott, by a politician likes his food, likes to beat up women, likes to beat up photographers, and anybody who perhaps has a word against him out on the street, he'll just punch them. But this is, this guy's now a lord. And the reason that they've got rid of all these hereditary peers is that so there is no check and balance whatsoever. Anything the Commons want passing, it will be passed. Now that's where I come from, that's where I'm looking at. They've removed our checks and balances. And to me, this alliance now has to become what the House of Lords used to be. It has to be a check and balance. It's gonna be an awful lot of work for an awful lot of people within this alliance. I keep wanting to say the word union, and I know a lot of people don't like the word union. But this alliance has got to become what the House of Lords used to be. It's got to stand up and say, no, sorry, you're going to have to take that back and rewrite it, or, sorry, no, you can't do this to people. Our people. We the people, if you like. So that's where I'm coming from. And, if you will, that relates to fracking. Now, I know nothing about fracking. I don't know what the problem is with it. No idea. I understand they're going to use an awful lot of water, which can never, ever be used again. I understand it may be poisoning the ground and the plant life and obviously the animal life that lives on that plant life. I don't know. Maybe it's all lies. Maybe it's totally safe. Maybe we're all going to get cheap energy. Maybe we're all going to be have, have no energy bills whatsoever. But at least I would like the government to turn around and say, these are the facts. This is the pros for having fracking. These are the negatives for having fracking make your own mind up and let's have a vote on it let's ask the people us we're the ones who pay for everything ask us and then let them make their mind up and if the people of this area who i know have suffered with fracking 
and the people down at Barton Moss who are suffering with fracking, if they'd have had a choice, fracking may have gone ahead. It would have been fine. Let them do it. Let them drill. Let them frack. Let them get this stuff out of the ground if it's there. But without giving us that choice, it's not legitimate as far as I can see. It's just not right. They should offer us a choice on everything that they want to do. And that's where the alliance comes in. We will be asking for that choice. We'll be asking you to decide. Not us, not the founders, if you will. In fact, we'll probably not be there once this alliance is up and running and got some legitimacy. We'll probably have voted other people out who are far more qualified than we are to do it. But at least we've started something. We've got this ball rolling. And once it's rolling, it's not going to stop. And we're going to be asking our betters, our elite, parliament, whoever it is, local government, where's our choice in this matter? When do we get to say? And if we don't get to say, then you're not going ahead with it. Simple as that. So that's where I come from anyway. So thank you very much. Right, thanks to the Daves. Uh, we find if you come to Ashton meet, if you don't know anyone's name, say Dave, you're going to be probably right. Three quarters are, are, are called Dave or something, you know, in the area. Right, uh, regarding fracking, uh, my background is I'm an environmental engineer. Okay, I ran the sites, uh, I ran some very big sites, I ran the biggest environmental site in Ireland up to 2009. I understand the mechanism behind the scenes, I understand how things work, I understand the politics, and I understand the money, right? And I can tell you now, fracking is all about money, right? Uh, there's actually an Irish guy, he's a managing director, I believe, or chief executive of Quadrilla. As soon as he had the Dublin accent, I went, yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen, I've seen how the Dublin money works, right? And uh, I'd like to do a bit of background dig into this guy. This is what we do with the Alliance. Right, instead of protesting, I'm not a protester. All we do with protesting is to send thugs to beat you up. And I've seen, I've seen the videos in Barton, Moss, you know, sort of, we spoke to a few people that have been there, ugly, very ugly. That's what they want us to do, guys. They want us out there waving placards and sitting down in the road so they can send guys in paramilitary uniforms around to, to hurt us and, and make our lives miserable, yeah? That's what they want. What they don't want us doing is digging, digging into who they are, what their relationships are, who's, who's holding the money, who the investors are, getting on board the company's investors, attending shareholders' meetings, this is the stuff we should be doing. And this isn't just for the quack the fracking, it's to support everything. We need to be the biggest pain in the backside they've ever met in their entire lives. And we can do it if we get together, we get organised, put the protesting stuff to one side that doesn't work, right? That's what they want us to do. It takes their energy away and it gets people angry. They want angry people. Don't be angry, be frustrated, be, be indignant. Right? Don't be angry about it, right? We can turn this round. Question I've got to ask, if does anyone know the answer to this one? If this fracking doesn't work, right, uh, 50 years time we start seeing all sorts of crap bubbling up through the surface and I come from a place in Scotland called Motherwell who have got, uh, for many years they pumped uh, industrial waste from steelworks down into the mines and it, it, find, it, it finds its way to the surface, it leaches its way to the surface, it, it happens, it's an uh, 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 industrial black spot. Uh, Motherwell's are result of it. Most people moved away because it's the ground there is so heavily contaminated and it will be forever. There's a stream and uh, the last I heard was this stream will have no, nothing, nothing will be able to live in a stream for 30,000 years because of the sheer level of, of metals pollution in, in the water because the water comes up through springs from the ground come up through these mines. Now we've got mines here and for anyone who can tell you, and I'm saying this now as an environmental engineer, anyone who can tell you with certainty this is going to be outcome of fracking is a liar. It's all based upon probabilities, it's based upon risk analysis, it's based upon statistics, and it's based upon guesses. Okay? Uh, this is, this is the, the reality of the situation. Who carries the bond in 50 years' time, 100 years' time, if suddenly we find that entire areas are getting contaminated with contaminated soil, if we suddenly find rivers, all the fish are dying in them, whatever unknown consequences, cancer, hotspots, whatever happens, right? This, this stuff actually becomes a safety hazard issue, right? Uh, a, a, a contact issue. Uh, who carries the bond in 50, 100 years' time? Quadrilla? We do. 
the government, we do.